The Dr. Fazo Show is brought to you by Health Tips Media. The Dr. Fazo Show is intended for health education purposes only and complies with all HIPAA regulations. All of the CDC guidelines for COVID-19 safety were followed while filming this episode of The Dr. Fazo Show. Hello everybody, welcome to The Dr. Fazo Show. And now, here is Dr. Fazo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dr. Fazl TV show. This is Dr. Fazl TV show for May 2023. It is almost unbelievable that we are in 2023. Half the year has almost already passed. On that note, I just want to talk briefly today about dementia or memory loss. The reason I chose this topic was a lot of questions from the, my audience and from patients and a lot of new cases that I was seeing recently for memory loss. So I thought it was a good idea to bring that uh, topic to the public attention and then brief introduction of uh, dementia, which is the loss of memory and what's the difference between dementia and delirium and a natural aging process versus uh, other causes of memory loss. And then also what we can do to prevent it or if you have it, how to slow down the process or to even avoid it, right? So that's what we're gonna be talking today. At the end of my discussion today, I'll take some, uh, you know, we'll take some questions from the audience and we'll see if we can uh, use uh, that question and answer session in a more interactive way. So let's talk about that, dementia. So dementia is a, a medical term which is used uh, for description of memory loss. Now we have to <clears throat> understand that with time, as people get older, there's a slowing of the memory. People do lose memory a uh, little bit over every year when they get older uh, after a certain age. So that's a normal process. Just like you lose your muscle mass or, you know, or other aging process in the body, your brain also have aging process. Uh, if you have a higher functioning brain uh, activity in your earlier year, you will have less issues towards the end when the dementia starts to occur. In the 70s and 80s, that's the uh, age group where it generally starts to happen. So, but some people have early dementia as well. And as is, it depends on the causes uh, uh, of dementia, what age group the dementia will start also depends on certain lot of factors. So we, we will we'll briefly discuss that too. So basically, uh, Let's go to the basics. Dementia is a loss of memory, uh, both recent and uh, remote memory, but mostly recent memory or short-term memory. So we have long-term memory and short-term memory. So in dementia, generally people start to lose short-term memory. Or long-term memories kind of tend to stay uh, uh, longer than the short-term memory. So typically, you know, uh, what I heard from somebody was saying that, you know, uh, a person was taking care of patients uh, in a memory care uh, place, like a dementia place, that most of the patients, they revert to their childhood, like they think they are child again. And the reason is that they are, perhaps, they remember most of their remote memory, which is from their childhood. So they think they are 13 years old, or you know, they're like certain kind of things, which they like to use to do when they were a child. So they are reverting back to their childhood. So that's because they're remembering, remote, they have a remote memory still in there, but the short-term memory, like what they did yesterday or day before yesterday, they tend to forget things, or where they left the keys, those kind of things, right? So there's a difference between dementia and delirium. So delirium means that people are have a waxing, a waxing and waning memory uh, loss. Like uh, one day they will have a better memory, the next day they will have less memory. That's not dementia. That's, dementia is a chronic, irreversible, progressive, declining condition. So it, once you have it, it's like, if it's treatable, it's a different story. But most chronic dementias, they are like progressive, not reversible in nature. So delirium is where you have memory today and tomorrow your memory is not there and day after tomorrow you will have your memory back. So that can be due to a lot of things. And generally we see uh, infections, urinary tract infection in uh, you know, elderly uh, patients can cause delirium. 
and people will not present with classical symptoms of urinary tract infection, for example, um, burning in the urine or frequency of urination. So they will prevent with alternate mental status or, you know, or forgetfulness or stuff like that. So obviously we need to check the urine for infection and if it's infection, you treat with antibiotics and they get better. So that's delirium, right? Reversible, vaccine remaining. Certain medication can cause the same effect. Some uh, uh, pain medications or certain uh, uh, antipsychotic medication can cause the same effect. You can cause, uh, you know, change in your um, mental capacity, or mental power. And people start to tend to forget things like uh, Neurontin, Gabapentin is one of them, Lyrica, those kind of medications. Cymbalta, you know. These are the medications which people are commonly given for neuropathies and uh, for injuries and uh, pain. And then also the opiates, the narcotics, you know, they also cause uh, memory loss. But that's not chronic. I mean, if you stop it, the memory will come right back. So that's kind of more of a delirium, right? or side effect of the medication. So we should be clear on those two things. So before we label anybody that they have dementia, and please note that there's a, when you see a neurologist or a, a provider or physician, uh, they will do a, something known as mini mental scale uh, evaluation of your memory before they put a stamp of dementia on you. There's a, you know, there's a questionnaire, questionnaire of 30 questions and they ask you different questions and then they score you and if your score is 20 or less, that means you have dementia. So uh, before we say that you have dementia, we have to do, you know, make sure it's not delirium, it's not due to side effect of medication. And then also it is, uh, we can quantify it by the mini mental status exam. Very simple test, take five, 10 minutes to do it, but it's more uh, objective than subjective. So uh, what are the different causes? So most people are worried about Alzheimer's, right? So Alzheimer's, you can pretty much uh, will have a family history, happens in the late 70s, you know, but can start early if it's genetic uh, causes. And sometimes you can have mixed dementia. You can have dementia due to one cause plus another cause, and that will be a lot more worse and faster. So you have to be vigilant for that too. So mixed dementia, right? Alzheimer is like uh, where you have a plaque buildup of, uh, you know, some scar tissue in your brain. I mean, it's a kind of layman terminology. But if you do an MRI of the brain, there's a classical picture of the uh, Alzheimer's you can see, and you can diagnose that with that this patient would or would have Alzheimer's disease. So that's another way to diagnose it. You can have an MRI of the brain. Now, the other causes of dementia are vascular dementia. Vascular dementia means that, as you can see behind this uh, slide, or I can bring in front of you, uh, in front of me, as I said. Right here, you can see this is a brain, let's do not it, right here. And as you can see, uh, there's a the heart. The heart is pumping. The blood is going from the aorta to the carotid arteries, which are the arteries in the neck, and it's going to the brain and it's being supplied by the thing. Let's have this uh, picture gone away or the hologram. So now, uh, now you know the, how the brain works, right? It gets blood supply from the heart to the carotid arteries to the brain. So if the art, uh, the blood supply to the brain is poor due to the plaque buildup, and you can see, let's bring another slide right here, the hologram right here. You can see this is uh, the blood is going through this uh, artery and this blo the blockage is right here, uh, carotid artery blockage. And if that is compromised, especially on both sides, it can cause a lack of blood flow to the brain and it can cause dementia. Um, sometimes we call it a small vessel disease. Uh, let's bring another slide right here. And you can see in this uh, hologram, uh, that uh, the blood vessel towards the end of the brain, uh, they are kind of minute as compared to the healthy brain. We'll let this slide go. Let's bring another hologram right here. So you can see that uh, uh, those small blood vessels are plugged up at the end. Towards the end of the brain, they're plugged up. We call it small, uh, uh, small, small vessel disease. So what happened is that brain start to, start to get less blood supply towards you know, the edge of the brain. No, remember the brain. Uh, 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 let's uh, let's move everything apart. Let me give you a little a brief uh, brief anatomy of the brain. That's the brain right here. You can see the brain uh, tissue outside. We call it gray matter, and the, the 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 tissue inside we call it white matter. So the gray and white matter works together. So the gray matter is the where all your uh, calculations is happening, all your uh, neurological functioning is happening. The white matter carries those messages from gray matter to spinal cord to the different parts of the body. So that's kind of basic 
uh, later uh, anatomy of the brain. So, um, so if the the gray matter is not getting blood supply, it will become uh, poor in function, and one of the function of uh, brain is to remember things and recall things. So, uh, patient will uh, suffer from something we call a small small vessel disease or vascular dementia, right? And you can also diagnose that with CATS uh, with the with the MRI of the brain. The CAT scan of the brain is mostly used for uh, uh, bleed of the brain or, or brain tumors, uh, but MR is more uh, specific or more accurate for diagnosing neurological disorders. Then let's go over a few other causes of dementia. Metabolic causes like hypothyroidism. If your thyroid function is low, now you can see this is the neck right here, and this is in the middle of the thyroid gland. So if it produces a hormone known as a thyroid hormone, if that's low, it will, can cause dementia. Now, that's a good news because it's easy to treat. You can use uh, levothyroxine, you know, and we can check the blood test uh, after a few weeks and make sure the dose is accurate, and that will fix it. That's, and your memory will come right back. So hypothyroidism is another cause of dementia, right? So we talked about, uh, there are a few other causes like high pressure in the brain, we call it hydrocephalus. And you can see here, there's a internal pooling system of the brain. You can think that way, like we have like a, this is a white matter, uh, gray matter, white matter, and in the middle you can see there's a fluid going on which is uh, known as CSF. Sometimes the pressure goes too high and kind of push the tissue of the brain outside, like make it like compressed. We call it hydrocephalus, and that's another cause of dementia. So what you do, you uh, make a kind of VP shunt, you make a little, uh, put a little tube in the brain, then it goes under the skin and drains right into your belly and we call it VP shunt, right? You can see right here, this fluid is going right from the brain directly bypassing everything, going to the belly, and this is known as a VP shunt. So hydrocephalus, if you have high pressure, that can also be diagnosed with MRI. It's reversible, that's the good news, right? So before we label up somebody have dementia and automatically assume that patient has Alzheimer's, we should do a diagnostic workup. That includes the brain MRI, definitely, uh, ultrasound of the carotid arteries to look at the blood supply, and also the blood test to look for metabolic causes. Actually, there's a whole bunch of blood tests which we need to be done, which need to be done when we send the patient to neurologist for dementia workup. That includes a certain kind of infections, for example, syphilis. So we have to check for syphilis. So, um, as the story goes, you know, um, you know, Al Capone, the uh, big uh, uh, Italian mob mafia in uh, Chicago, back in the days uh, when uh, he was, you know, when he was public enemy number one, at that time. And the government was trying to get him and they couldn't get him. So um, eventually he uh, got arrested for tax evasion and was put into a very famous uh, prison, uh, Alcatraz. I mean, most people probably don't know that, but that's where he went. And then he was released after a few years back to his home in Florida. And that's uh, when he had developed dementia. And then he died later because of dementia. I mean, his memory keep declining and he died. So when he, he actually, he, what he had was something known as neurosyphilis. So he got syphilis because he was also have, uh, you know, this uh, prostitution rings. And uh, from that place, he got syphilis. He got syphilis from, uh, you know, from obviously unprotected uh, sex. And um, uh, that syphilis got, uh, you know, it can go to certain stages within primary, secondary, and tertiary. Tertiary syphilis is when it affects the brain and will have no other symptoms. So pretty much you have to do the blood test to find out. And if it is a VDRL test, if it's positive, then you can, uh, how you treat it? Penicillin, right? Simple, one injection, good to go. So at that time, they didn't have that technology. So had, has he had that uh, antibiotic available at that time or was uh, knowledge of uh, that you can have a syphilis in the brain? He would have been cured. Well, everything happened for a reason. So I'm, I'm just bringing up that important historical topic to the discussion because, uh, you, you know, uh, we can miss things very easily if we are not vigilant. As they say, I sees what the mind knows. So if you're not aware of things, you will never think about it. You have to think about it to make a diagnosis. So that's why when we, when you or loved one think somebody is having dementia, before you label Alzheimer's, please do take the necessary step to have them seen by the doctor, especially the neurologist, you know, the brain specialist. Now, uh, how we treat it, obviously, as it depends on the cause. If the cause is, uh, you know, um, vascular dementia, control the blood pressure, control the cholesterol, you know, if it is due to uh, 
hydrocephalus you know load there's certain medications which we can use but one of the medication is to one of the ways to use the vp shunt like bypass the brain uh, circulation system directly to the belly also if you have uh, you know metabolic causes like uh, you know if you have a uh, hypothyroidism you know go back on synthroid vitamin b12 deficiency can cause dementia as well if it that's low that should be checked and also be and, and that should help too i mean again this is a very simple uh, 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 discussion about dementia there's some rare causes too for of dementia like heavy metal poisoning you know uh, blood disorders and i'm bypassing all that because they are like five percent 95 percent is what i'm talking right now so let's worry about the 95 percent uh, five percent are rare and that uh, i leave up to the neurologist's uh, uh, discretion for their discussion uh, but uh, it will become too complicated if I bring everything, uh, all the causes of dementia in, in a short discussion. So I want to keep it simple so it's more meaningful for my audience and they can have a better uh, understanding of this important problem. Now there's one more thing I have to bring up. It's known as brain fog. Uh, so lately after COVID-19, I've been seeing a lot of patients with uh, uh, you know, early onset of memory loss. You know. So remember, the, this uh, COVID-19 virus was not just respiratory virus, but also affect the heart and nervous system. People have autonomic dysfunction, causing you know slow rate heart rate, fast heart rate. You know, also causing inflammation of the heart, like pericarditis, lung inflammation, like pneumonia and stuff. And a lot of people died from that. That was the primary source of mortality uh, when it came earlier. A few years down the road, after like now in 2023, COVID-19 started in 2019. We are seeing uh, more of uh, complication, long-term syndrome, uh, or we call it long cohort syndrome. Uh, it's manifesting with the neurological dysfunction, mostly, mostly like a memory loss. People call it brain fog. Um, no treatment is available at this time, unfortunately. So uh, as long as you know, you, if you can correlate with, uh, you know, back in the days, people have a bad COVID infection and then they have a memory loss or brain fog for a while then you can think it is, uh, you know, loss of uh, sense of smell or loss of uh, taste, sensation. That's also neurological, right? I mean, nerves which are being affected. So the same thing goes to the brain. So it does affect the brain, then it can cause uh, loss of memory too, you know. So that's a new cause of uh, dementia, which we are seeing now. Obviously it's new, so we have to find the diagnosis at a different level since it's very new. Just like syphilis back in the days, right? We didn't know the diagnosis, so we didn't know the treatment. Uh, same things now, it's COVID-19. So now we have a dementia due to that, you know, so it's a different uh, problem, different treatment. So we have to be vigilant. So I think over the next few years, I'm gonna see a lot of uh, rapid uh, loss of memories because this COVID-19 has changed the natural progression of the disease in the general population. That's unfortunate, but that's the fact. So the other thing is, um, Let's talk about like, you know, common treatments, all right? So just like you do exercise with muscles, like you do exercise with muscles to build your muscle mass, same thing is the more you use your brain, the better it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna get. There's something known as dig digital dementia. That's something new. But the digital dementia is that, you know, for every single thing, for example, if you have to travel, you want a GPS, right? You, you, most people wouldn't be able to recall a few phone numbers when back in the days when they, they could recall a lot of phone numbers. Now, since we don't have to recall the numbers since our cell phone store all of them, we can barely recall our phone number or a couple of other phone numbers. I mean, and if you try to remember more phone numbers, you tend to forget, it's, it's getting difficult. Same thing is calculation. If you have multiple uh, high level ca calculations, people get, uh, you know, they get stuck because they're using calculators, right? So calculator was the first wave, then we got navigation, GPS, so we have a loss of our sense of direction. Uh, can't read the map that much, you know, so it's uh, more and more trends is coming in because it's app for every single thing, you know. So those apps are making it more automation, so less uh, use of brain power. So people are, when they are forced to use their memory or brain, they get stuck. And this is known as a new problem, digital dementia like electronic dementia, right, because of your cell phone. So that's another problem, right? Now you can catch up with all of our previous shows on all Roku devices. Simply search for the Dr. Falso Show channel and add it to your home screen.
view our videos online by visiting our website at www.drfalzoshow.com. Our videos are available on YouTube by searching for The Dr. Fossil Show. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The Dr. Fossil Show is available in multiple provider office waiting rooms across Yuma, Arizona. Don't forget to get your copy of Health Tips magazine and read about this interview, currently distributed across Yuma, Arizona. So every technology have a pros and cons, and here's the, here's the cons. Digital dementia, right? So tend to use it less and less. I mean, try to use more of your brain for a few uh, things. So that will keep your memory sharp. Try to remember the phone numbers. You know, try to do mental calculations. You know, uh, try to use not a GPS uh, to see uh, if you can, you know, if you lose your um, navigation system or whatever, you can still make it back to your home. So um, other uh, things are like, you know, doing puzzles. Uh, you know, if you're having any uh, memory loss issues, then and if you think it's not reversible, it's like Alzheimer's or something like that, then use the, you know, a lot of uh, puzzles uh, to play with so you can keep your brain sharp. That's one of the way to slow down your um, memory loss. So as I said earlier, high, if you had a higher mental uh, function back in the days when you were young, you're gonna have some loss, but you're gonna still be gonna be kind of, you might go to, if you were super extra average, then you will go to average by the time you get to dementia age. So having a better uh, uh, mental power before uh, you get, uh, dementia, uh, you will have less side effects. Although you will feel more different because you know from yourself that your memory was better, way better. That, but in general, uh, per, uh, people around you would not feel that much because for them that might be a normal thing. Uh, well, one thing I missed, by the way, the other cause of dementia is stroke and brain tumors too. So if you have brain tumors or stroke or some parasitic infection, you know, believe me, there's some parasites which can cause, uh, which come from pork, they can go to the bloodstream and they can reside in the brain that can cause also can cause dementia so again do the blood test you know have, have seen by the provider get a diagnosis of dementia through mini mental scale do the basic workup the brain scan clotted ultrasound blood test there's a standard uh, protocol and then once the diagnosis is made um, treat accordingly that's how you treat it prevention i told you do your brain exercises try to avoid digital dementia and control the blood pressure, high cholesterol, and you know, well, other thing is like the brain trauma. So contact sports, which have a lot of trauma to the brain, that can also cause, uh, very early, I mean, Muhammad Ali, you know, the famous boxer, he got uh, Parkinson's, oh, by, by the way, another very common cause of dementia is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's, so if you have Parkinson's, yeah, if you treat the Parkinson's, you will also treat the dementia. So. Um, well, I was saying Muhammad Ali, you know, famous box back in the days, he unfortunately had a lot of trauma to the brain and then he developed uh, Parkinson's and then dementia from that, you know. So dementia we can see in a lot of uh, uh, boxers, you know, the people who have got a lot of injuries to the head, you know, uh, traumatic uh, head injury or brain injury, TBI, that's another source of uh, dementia. So early from, Early from very beginning, uh, you should avoid, especially your children not having too much trauma to your brain, to their brain, because that repeated trauma can cause early onset dementia, right? So protect your brain, please protect your brain. You know, brain has uh, everything over your body. Brain control your everything, right? So um, last thing, uh, I think that will wrap, that's where I wrap it up. And I would love to take some questions from the audience. So if there's any questions, um, I'll start taking question now. So, question please. At what age do most people develop dementia? So, as I said, it depends on the cause. So you can, let's say if you get neurocephalus, for example, or you, got, you can get in, even in 40s and 50s. 
Um, but if we're talking about like vascular dementia or Alzheimer's, that generally happens. And if it's not genetic, generally in the 70s, start to kick in and then they start to get worse over a period of time. In the so next 10 years, you're gonna have a uh, significant dysfunction where you will have a... If you want to have a genetic answer, what time, what age in 70s? I mean, I have seen, uh, you know, patients which have, you know, in, in the 90s and the memory is pretty sharp. So it's not just the age thing, but like, you know, like few things are common, a few things, uh, certain age group, 70s is where you typically start to see that thing. And, and if you start to have, develop dementia, for example, Alzheimer's, in a very, very small period of time, you will have a dependency for even basic things uh, from your loved one or people around you. It was a good question. What is the role of Prevagen for dementia treatments? Oh, well, that's a very good question. So we normally heard, uh, hear a lot of things about using Prevagen. Prevagen, you can see back on my slide, uh, my, uh, back on my uh, uh, on the slide, that's a uh, part of the Prevagen. So Prevagen is actually nothing but vitamin D. So a lot of people do not know that. So what Prevagen is vitamin D. So there's some evidence that vitamin D supplementation, if you low on that, will help. So Prevagen can help if you're low on vitamin D. So when we do dementia workup, we do check for vitamin D. So uh, yes, uh, so you can take Prevagen or you can just take extra vitamin D, it's the same thing. A lot of people have uh, no, um, that do not know that it's actually the same thing. So it's a fancy form of vitamin D. It just kind of, you know, sells better, looks good, but it's the vitamin D. So that was a good question again. Well, I think that, uh, that uh, that person have a, yeah, please, no, next one. Yeah, I think she have a question. Yes, you can ask a question. Go ahead. What are early onset symptoms of dementia? Oh, early onset of the symptoms of dementia depends on the cause. So for example, if the cause is um, vascular dementia, you will have just like short-term memory loss. Like you wouldn't remember where the keys are, you know, what you, uh, where, what are you doing in this room, you know, uh, or, or, or you know, with uh, what you ate uh, this morning and stuff like that, you know. Um, so that's a, a common symptoms. But if you have Parkinson's disease, for example, then the, the symptom would include the, the tremors of the hand, uh, the symptoms would include the shuffling gait, as well as the, 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 the face look different. You know, they look like, kind of like they have no wrinkles. They would long, look young, actually. The people who have Parkinson's look younger than their age because the, they lose wrinkles, because they lose the muscle tone. Uh, in the muscle phase, or oh, actually it does not lose the tone, but it becomes more spastic. The muscle become more, uh, muscle uh, 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 of the face become more spastic, and like more into spasm, and they lose wrinkles. And typically those uh, patients look younger than their age, you know. So they will have a shuffling gait, younger, age, uh, younger looking faces, and uh, uh, tremors, which is we call resting tremors, their hands and thumbs, like you, you will see like a pill rolling uh, tremors when they're resting, uh, plus loss of memory. So that's Parkinson's disease. So again, uh, question was, uh, what are the symptoms or signs of dementia, depending on the cause? Obviously, it's the short-term memory loss more than long-term memory loss. That's the, that's the heart of all the dementias. But then associated factors would depend on the cause as well. Good. Well, I think we have no more questions this time. So on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, you have a, a blessed day. Um, and uh, we'll meet next time. Till the next time, it's Dr. Fazal, uh, Dr. Fazal TV show. Stay tuned up and we'll bring more interesting topics in the next month. Have a nice day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming in and attending Dr. Fazal TV show.